Empower Radio presents The Farkas Files, an exploration of energy, metaphysics, and the paranormal with David Franklin Farkas. The Farkas Files. The truth is in here somewhere. Here's your host, David Franklin Farkas. Good evening, and thank you one and all for spending some time with us, Um, because otherwise we'd feel silly sitting here by ourselves. (laughs) My guest tonight is Susan Collins, who is an internationally known dowser, and we're going to be talking about orbs and her new book about orbs. So we're going to have some fun. But first, tonight's metaphysical musing, which it seems just has to be about um, global warming, considering the craziness that's going on today um, with our, our president... Uh, pulling out of the Paris Accords, and the the thing that I saw that I really loved was, and I don't know whether it was in response to what happened today or it was something that he said um, earlier, but President Obama recorded something, and he said, look, you know, if you went to a doctor and he told you you had diabetes, and you didn't like the diagnosis, and you went to another doctor, and he said the same thing. And you went to 99 doctors, and they all said, you've got diabetes, you can't eat these foods, you need to do this, you need to do that. Would you argue with that? Would you just say, no, that can't be right, I'm going to keep going to other doctors? Do you find somebody who says, well, maybe not? No, nobody would do that. That would be just crazy. Once you get scientific people all saying the same thing, and science is about constant observation, experimentation, and changing things when you learn something new. So will concepts and ideas change over time? Absolutely. But the consensus right now is that the world is warming and human activity is is causing a major part of that warming and that we're in deep trouble. Even if we don't, we did nothing, we'd be in deep trouble, but we really have to do something now to try and make all this better before there's major disasters. Not that we're not already seeing it. Um, And I just love that metaphor of the doctors about going shopping from doctor to doctor trying to find somebody who will say something else no that's not how it works that really isn't how science works when everybody who's doing experimental science comes up with the same answer yes it's called the theory but scientific theories are not what's used in colloquial language scientific theory is we put together the best ideas that we have and the consistent answer is this so our understanding at this point of how the this aspect of the universe works is this and we may learn something else later but right now everybody says the world is warming so there's this wonderful cartoon that's been making the rounds for years because this conversation has been going on for years and it's a big it's a picture of a big con- conference room and people on stage and whatnot and somebody in the audience raises his hand and says well what if this is wrong and we make the world better for no reason (laughs) and that's really where we're at the people who are arguing the point that this might not be exactly everything we need to know and that we'll learn things later are missing the point that We need to do this to make the world work and keep us from losing the coastlines and having terrible weather and all the rest of it. But even if we didn't, the world would be better if we did all the things that we know we could do to reduce human activity that causes emissions, that causes climate change. The world would be a better place. So there it is. And there our strange president is, and we live in interesting times. <laughs> so that's my metaphysical musing. And now I'd like to introduce my guest, Susan Collins. Thank you so much for being with us. It is my pleasure, David. I'm happy to be back with you. 
And we actually have met many times at the American Society of Dowsers Convention. And I've had the, I remember meeting you for the first time. We had uh, vendor tables next to each other, and I had no idea that you were dows- <laughs> dowsing royalty. And I had uh, no idea that you were a Ghostbuster, except you were wearing a T-shirt that said Ghostbuster. Yeah, so, at that point, I still had the Ghostbuster T-shirt. So that was yeah. uh, one well, of we, the. Well, we yeah, we need to be seen. We need to do we need to do things to be seen. Right, right. So you're Canadian. You're very well known there and mm-hmm. here and all over. Mm-hmm. And as an expert on dowsing, can you? You give us a really succinct explanation, or at least yours, because I've got mine. Well, uh, succinct explanation of what is dowsing. Well, thank thank you for asking that, and I do get asked that a lot, and it I'll is bet. a challenge. It is a challenge because I call myself a professional dowser. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a professional well locator, which is what uh, dowsing was originally known for and used for in pioneer times, uh, mm-hmm. finding water and um, in England and various Europe, finding minerals, uh, finding gold. Um, it's a way, a dowsing is a way of tuning uh, your body to be in resonance with the frequency of the thing you are looking for. That's that's one of the things you can you can say. So that if I am looking for water, for example, I kind of tune in, it's like a radio frequency, like tuning my radio station, which is my body, tuning my station so that I can find clear, pure, good tasting water. Uh, so it's it's resonant frequencies. The way we do this, we amplify the body's sense of knowing. So we, we, our bodies are electromagnetic, but and we have a hunch, we have intuition. Uh, I use an external tool, a pendulum or L rods or a bobber. I use a tool um, to amplify what the body already knows. And it, uh, using the tool, it makes the signal bigger. So if, again, if I'm looking for water or if I'm uh, looking, if I'm doing ghost busting, for example, mm-hmm. that uh, resonating with a tool is actually safer for the body. So let's say, um, let's, let's use a health example. If, if there's some food that I'm wondering if I should eat, uh, chocolate cake, which I just had for dessert. If I go in there with my pendulum and I ask, is this a healthy food for me to eat? And the cake I just ate, I get a no on that. <laughs> so it's it's a way it's like having a little conscience uh, at the end of your fingertips that helps you make decisions. It helps you access your intuition. Um, and and you know my story, but perhaps not everybody. But when I was 29, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, I was on chloroquine, diclofenac, methotrexate, something else. Um, for years, and my hands were claws for years, 23 years, my hands were claws. And I, I tried regular medicine and alternative medicine, and really my immune system shut down. I had two little kids, and I was a mess. And I, so I was desperate. And, and often people come to dowsing when they're desperate, like the, the normal answers don't work. You know, I tried everything, and it's not working. But I, I found dowsing, which is a way – of uh, checking out energy and seeing what energies fit my body and what energies don't. So over time, I uh, I fine tune this practice, and um, I dose for everything now. I, I dose twenty four seven, even while I'm asleep, uh, for all kinds of things. <laughs> so I've been a professional dowser since uh, I don't know nineteen ninety nine or two thousand seventeen years or so at this point. And just to complete that story, yep. using dowsing yep. allowed you to get your health back. You yes, figured exa- out, you figured, exactly. Yeah. You so figured so, out what your body needed. Yep, exactly. So I found dowsing in about 1999, 2000. It took me five years. But after that five years, I was no longer on drugs. Uh, and I um, was symptom free. And I have spent the next... You know, that's 12 years ago. I haven't been on drugs. I don't take any supplements. I drink tap water. My entire self-care practice, my health practice, I ask my body systems to be in resonance with the beneficial energies of the planet. That's Mm. all I do. So I try to stay conscious. I try to stay aware of the energies around me. I always have the 
pendulum in my pocket. And as I encounter, as I go through my life, life in my day-to-day and drive the car around and cook food, I'm always aware of the energies and seeing if they are supporting me or not supporting me. The things that don't support me, I can either remove with dosing or adapt or transform. Uh, The energies that do support me, uh, I enhance. So I, I mentioned I drink tap water, but as I'm pouring the water out of the tap, I'm actually blessing the water, which sounds, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's prayer. Like, you know, we, we kind of, it's not based on religion, but we go into a resonance with the divine source, a spiritual sense. And as the water comes out of my, my city tap, I ask the water to meet my energy needs, eat the, to be, I ask the water to be my medicine. So the water right. is my medicine. Right. So it's, and, there's, and there's a lot of science at this point to back up the fact absolutely. that water is, responds to human emotions and affects us at a cellular level. So this is, um, I always love when the stuff that used to be woo woo has yeah. hard science behind it. Yeah. And and that is the thing, you know, the, the Eastern philosophers and the Eastern religion always had that mindfulness practice and, um, an intuitive sense of how the world worked and they, right. you know, made up stories about that and made made that into religions but we now um with quantum science and quantum physics and uh various forms of science we are finding the science behind some of the things for example right. the, pl- the placebo effect you probably know it mm-hmm. works 30 percent of the time in fact the placebo effect if you take a sugar pill or a pretend operation where they just give you a little nick or put a band-aid on mm-hmm. can work equally well uh, as the actual operation and there's a, there's actually the, the latest thing that I I read mm-hmm. you can get a placebo effect and positive results giving somebody a placebo that they know is not a medication that's right even when the, the, rich, the ritual the ritual of taking it Yes, yes, it's the it, shamanic practice. Right, right. Yeah. It's really, really fascinating how much we can control. And a lot of people get sicker and sicker because they focus on how sick they are. Yeah. And that there's no way out. That is true. That is true. It's so, a downward spiral. Right. So my my quick uh, answer when people ask me about dowsing is yeah. that dowsing is being psychic for people that aren't psychic. Okay. So, so <laughs> when, when we talk, when we talk about people that are psychic, they have mm-hmm. some kind of expanded sense mm-hmm. that they use as the way that they get information. Mm-hmm. So clairvoyance is an expanded visual sense. Clair audience is, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, is hearing things that other people don't. They're tuning into exactly the same kinds of things that can be accessed with dowsing tools. Mm-hmm. So for people that either haven't developed those, could, but but haven't uh, developed those expanded senses or where they don't have any sense of that, they can use dowsing tools to get the same kinds of information that psychics get. And I know most of the psychics that I know will use a pendulum to clarify things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think we all do that. The, yeah. the, the interesting thing is that as people learn to dose and begin to use it, their, their psychic and intuitive uh, abilities develop. Right. Right. I don't use the word psychic so much for beginners um, Mm -hmm. because, because that's kind of, to me, it's kind of an alien. Oh, I'm not a psychic. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But I, I call this our birthright technology that we are. Yeah, I know we are born to do this. We have, you know, the mysterious sixth, sense is simply our ability to detect and emit electromagnetic frequencies which you know in medical science they do hot heart monitors and uh, various things that measure the body's electromagnetic uh, uh, action so if we can tune in to our body's electromagnetic ability to send and receive uh, that's what the sixth sense is. That's where the intuition right. lies. And we can all do it because we're human. So uh, anybody can do this. I always say that. You don't have to be psychic. Anybody can do it. Right, right. That's part of the beauty of it. That is, that's the so we, amazing power. 
So we could, we love talking about dowsing. It's fascinating, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. but, um, you have a new book about orbs and the subject of orbs right. is just fascinating. Well, uh, and so why don't you introduce people to the idea of orbs, you know, how they, they may know about them and not realize that's what they looked at. Right. Right. Well, um, I, I wrote my first book on orbs in about 2008, and I've written seven or eight books, but 2008, I wrote a book on them uh, called Meeting Orbs in Sacred Space, and mm-hmm. I, I, up, I updated that, and when I came to um, republish that, reprint that this time, it's like so much has developed, like we have progressed so far in the last eight or ten years almost. I can't just reprint that old book. We have to create a new book. And, uh, and this time, you know, back, back when I first wrote it, I was one of the very few people taking pictures of orbs and orbs are are the things that, uh, show up often in people's photographs. Um, and, and we used to think it was camera malfunction. People still say it's dust or raindrops or yeah, no. various things. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes it is dust and raindrops. But you, you, in your introduction, you talked about science. You talked about observation. You talked about experimentation and developing mm-hmm. theories. So in, in my world, when these photographs, it's irrefutably not dust. These energies um, have consciousness. And I know that because I'll, I'll go out and I'll take, uh, say, 10 pictures in a row. The first eight pictures, there's nothing in it. And then there'll be an orb image, a very distinct um, structured element. Mm-hmm. And the, in the daytime or the nighttime, it will show up like bright and clear and very structured. I take that picture and then the next picture I take, it's gone. Right. So they come. We can we we can interact with them. So sometimes they're they're just there, and we happen to capture them. But it's possible, I believe, to develop uh, a dialogue. And the orbs, you know, ultimately they are an interdimensional energy. Uh, we call them interdimensional because most people uh, can cannot see them. I find um, in our intuitive community, there's maybe one in a hundred that can see them or maybe one in 200. Like some people see them with their naked eyes. Most of us I, just see with cameras. I did meet a family that could see them with their naked eyes and yeah. would duck when they came screaming across the oh, room at them. <laughs> you, know, you know, like there is a reason that we don't see these things because we're here being humans. And when we are always aware of these intimate interdimensional presences, it's, right. it can be disconcerting. Right. Right. And then it, it was an interesting conversation. They didn't actually have the experience while I was there, but there were a lot of orbs that showed up on uh, pictures that evening. So, yeah. uh, and the thing that's fascinating for, for people that have never seen an orb in a picture, it's a, a tra- bright translucent circle, which has structure in it. Yeah. So some of, some of them look like they, have a face in it and some of them look like they have digital circuitry in it. There's all kinds of patterns, yes. but it certainly is not just a blob. It's not um, a blob. And, and, and some, they're, not, they're not, they're not just circles either. Right. Right. Most of um, them, most of the ones I've seen are circular. Well, that's, but I, I know that's, that there's, that's why in my book, I, Other people started taking these pictures in the last several years. So in the book this time, I invited other people to um, that I've met. I said, "Oh, you know, send me your pictures," and I've included them in here. And Mm -hmm. um, one of one of and you know, I talk about temporal distortion. So orbs come in these circular forms; they come in plasma forms. To me, the the circle can sometimes break open and plasma escapes right. from that. And then I have a, in the book, I have a picture of a humanoid. I call it a humanoid. It looks like a human. And it was taken on a night. We were doing orb photography. Uh, we're in a closed walled area. There is nobody there. Everybody's taking pictures of orbs. And one person takes a picture of a man walking across the field <laughs> of vision. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, right. so these these things are shape shifters. So they're they're kind of, they they kind of they start they break out of these plasma circles and and move into um, into free form plasma. There's another form of orb that I, I refer to as energy streams, and that's color pictures of that, those in the book as well, where it is like looks like a garden hose. And there's the little bright balls in the garden hose. And it's it's almost as if it's an orb carrier. It's how you can package these things and move them over space and time. They also come in mm. tube forms that, that look like a fluorescent tube sticking out of the ground, things moving around. It's, it's amazing. Um, some of the energy is dimensionally shifted. So I, there's a... A colleague of mine um, took a picture, took two pictures. One was through a window, and the picture is of a woman. Normal, It's a normal picture. She takes the picture again a second later, same camera, standing in the same place, and it is a completely different picture of different faces and a different interior space. Mm. So there's something we, we are shifting. We are shifting ourselves interdimensionally. So we have our normal space time here that we're walking around in. But as we begin to interact with interdimensional energy and the dosing and intuition, we start to be able to perceive some of these other forms, these other forms of consciousness that are out there. Right. So, so it's, it's as you said in your opening, it's observation. I see there's pictures and there's orbs in my photographs. It's experimentation. Well, let me try it at night. Let me try it in the daytime. And then finally, theory, it's like, what are these things? Um, and that, of course, pe- people will say, well, that's my my dead husband. It's an <laughs> angel. It's my dog or whatever. You know, honestly, there are, there are many types of orbs. Some of them, I believe, we generate ourselves. A strong emotional uh, response can generate an orb. It's like the heart pulse that's coming out. Our hearts are our strongest electromagnetic organ. And when we right. have that surge in our heart, that can pulse out uh, an interdimensional energy, which can then be photographed. Right. And, and it could also be that someone is recognizing the um, presence that then shows up as an orb on the photograph. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I had one situation where someone, and there were a lot of psychics in the, in the audience yeah. I was, that I was speaking to mm-hmm. and they, and they took pictures and there was this blue orb over by my shoulder and someone could see he blew there and mm-hmm. said, what's that blue blob next to you? And I said, you know, the Archangel Michael really doesn't like being called a blue blob. Uh, oh. <laughs> he's got a good sense of humor, but and that's a little over the top. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so there funny. are these confirmations in other ways. And then it's also showing up as an orb in photography. Yeah. And what's the relationship between the two and um, how that, you know, in- dimensional aspect shifts is really fascinating it is i think i have a i i kind of think that the orbs present themselves as these blobs if, if we can use that term but like who could be afraid of a little circular thing in a photograph? <laughs> and it's like preparing us in a way like maybe this is true and we can we can dose on that how true is this that the presence of orbs in our photographs is actually preparing us humans for the presence of of other things in photographs, you know, well, whether, whether Archangel Michael shows up with his flaming sword, <laughs> blue rope. We need to get ready for the break. I want to make okay. sure people know your website. Mm-hmm. www.doser.ca. Yep. Because you're in Canada. And it's I am different, Canada. So, right. Yeah, so the Dose, people that are used to dot .com all the time, if it's a Canadian website, it's dot .ca. Yeah. Um, and go check it out because there's all, all kinds of fascinating stuff there. And you can uh, buy the book there too. And you can get the book there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that. And it's on, um, sale. it's on sale right now for your listeners too. Fantastic. So we'll, we'll talk more about that after if you want. Great. Great. Um, so we're going to go to a break and we'll be back shortly. Unless, of course, we get taller. My guest tonight. <laughs> 
is Susan Collins, who is dowsing royalty from Ooh, Canada. Thank you. And I am getting taller, actually. <laughs> Excellent. I am. I am. Excellent. Um, <laughs> and so this is the Farkas Files on Empower Radio. And don't go nowhere because we're going to have more fun. And I think there might be a surprise. Listening to Empower Radio, an entire radio station devoted to your personal development, expanding your conscious awareness, and empowering positive change. Meet our hosts and listen online at EmpowerRadio.com, on iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher Radio, or iTunes, or download the Empower Radio app for your smartphone or tablet. It's free in the App Store, and it lets you listen to our shows and podcasts on demand. Empowering people, empowering change. Empower Radio, online at EmpowerRadio.com. Peekaboo, peekaboo, smile. Smile, buddy. Come on, smile. Oh, honey, he's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. <sighs> yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. You know how boys are. Or maybe he's teething. Oh, poor baby, I think his gums hurt. Maybe he's just tired. Or maybe his tummy hurts. He didn't eat that much. Maybe he's not ticklish. You think maybe he's scared of the dog? Maybe he'll outgrow it. Maybe it's a phase. Maybe he just doesn't like smiling. Maybe he has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at autismspeaks.org slash signs, or see a doctor today for an autism screening. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. And it can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. So you see, son, good manners are very, very important. Someday, many years from now, when you're a grown-up, you'll be a man. And when you are, you should be a gentleman. Do you want me to go through it one more time? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. Always say please, thank you, you're welcome, and excuse me. Sit up straight, hold doors open for ladies. If a door's shut, then knock first. Don't burp, don't swear, don't speak with a mouthful, don't reach across people's plates, keep your elbows off the table. What table? And don't interrupt. While we're at it, don't stare, don't use foul language, don't call people names, but do remember people's names. Always share your toys, play nice, and cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. On the bus, give up your seat to anyone who has trouble standing. Bottom line, treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Got it? Got it. And stop picking your nose. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But spending just two minutes twice a day making sure they brush their teeth is easier and could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. For fun two-minute videos to watch while brushing, visit 2min2x.org. That's 2min2x.org. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. Women now make up 37% of the workforce, changing their role forever. Harvard Medical School has now opened its doors to new female applicants. The first woman is now in space. The majority of last year's doctorate degrees were earned by women. We've come so far, but our news is changing for the worse. More women die from heart disease and stroke than men, even though it can be prevented. Make a change at GoRedForWomen.org today. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women. Empower Radio. Empowering you 24-7. Online at EmpowerRadio.com. Now back to the Farkas Files with David Franklin Farkas on Empower Radio. And we're back with, with my guest, Susan Collins, joining Happy us from to be Canada. Here. And I, have, I just have this feeling that someone else is around. I think I hear knocking at the door. Oh, my God. Oh, let me Who go and open is the door. It? Oh, it's Graham Gardner. Graham Hi, Gardner Graham. from Scotland. Yeah, my Hey, gosh. good evening. Hey, hey. Graham. I, nice wow, to you showing again, David. What's that? Nice to be with you again. Good it's to be with years. you. Good to be with you. Haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Uh, so, another one of the people that I enjoy seeing at 
conventions, but that only happens once a year or every two years, whatever it happens to work at. So, so uh, well, what that's, brings that's you here? We're here. That's why we're here. Um, I'm lucky to be attending the Canadian convention again, which is uh, ah. tomorrow, actually. So uh, I'm here with Susan, and we're going over there tomorrow, and I'm speaking tomorrow night. Yep, that's Excellent. the Canadian, Canadian Society of Dosers in Peterborough, June 2 to 4. And uh, there's seats left if anybody's up in the uh, Ontario, Canada area. Uh, check it out, canadiandosers.org. Fantastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, uh, I guess, and I assume both of you are speakers at the... Well, then I, I, sp- I speak uh, on Saturday, and my topic is Meet Alien Energy with Dowsing. Mm-hmm. Which I'm sure is going to be fascinating, fascinating yeah, well, conversation. Well, it, does, it, does, it does tie into the orb energies that right. uh, from, you know, I, I mentioned, I think just before the break, I said something about perhaps uh, the interdimensional energies are preparing us by showing us pictures of orbs or allowing orb circular forms to show up. Maybe it's a way of prepping us to have um, a more visual experience of some of the interdimensional energies. So, so that's what that's what my talk is about. An interesting theory. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, a fascinating way to look at it. And we have another convention coming up shortly. Yep, uh, Graham and uh, I and you as well, David, will all be at the American Society of Dosers convention, and that's in Te- Saratoga Springs. Uh, Graham is teaching on June 14th, a workshop. I'm teaching June 15th, a workshop, and then uh, the uh, many speakers throughout that period, uh, Saratoga Springs, New York. And that website's um, www.dosers.org. Yeah. And there's seats in that, too. So that's a fun time. That's a lot of fun. It's at uh, Skidmore College now, which is a much nicer venue. Than- oh, don't, don't say that. <laughs> no, it is. Think, Saratoga Springs it is, is it's a great place. You know the the um, the spring waters there, the healing waters are amazing. It's a beautiful town and really good food and um, it's a it's a you know summer camp for dowsers. Where can adults go and uh, have fun and eat good food and learn things about intuition, develop skills. Certainly uh, the dowsing conferences are the place for that. Absolutely. And one of the things that I'm always fascinated by is I learn the most typically over lunch and, and dinner with people. I agree. Somebody, some, somebody will just be talking about what they do, how they responded to some situation. Mm-hmm. And I'll go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. I know you do, you've done this for the last 40 years, but back up a little bit and tell me the, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, the, uh, uh, the social stuff is, is almost as important as the actual lectures. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And, you know, we're all looking for pieces to the puzzle and ways to understand what's unfolding in front of us, which doesn't always immediately um, make coherent sense. And somebody just says something offhanded and it's like, oh, that's a piece to this puzzle. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And so it's it's a wonderful, wonderful place and such a diverse community. Mm-hmm. Um, I, think, I think for many of us. Uh, we're sole practitioners. We we're alone right. in our uh, office, or we're alone with our clients, and and there's there's so few people to talk to. This is David. This is why I appreciate your program so much. You bring people on, and it's like, oh, we can have this conversation, and it's it can be a normal conversation. Because so <laughs> right. often, at, often at home, we we can't do that. So it's it's great to to come together. David, what's your uh, your speech, your topic for your presentation? <laughs> Um, I'm going to be teaching the paper dowsing method that I've developed for collecting a lot of information quickly. So it's kind of a, a crossover between psychic perception and collecting data on paper. Hmm. So rather than getting a yes or no answer, you start tuning yourself to getting, for example, numbers or okay. creating a scribble on the paper to you get the feeling of something um, like auto- so automatic writing you mean well it it is in a way automatic writing but it's not looking for words 
Okay. It's looking for feeling tone and, and what the energy of the, whether it's a place or a person. So when I do an intake conversation with a, a new client on the phone, mm-hmm. I used to have to basically do a mini reading and kind of go into a, a semi-trance to get the data. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now in a few minutes, less than five minutes, I can collect everything I need to have the conversation, um, either about a person or about a property. Huh? And um, it's just, it's transformed my work. Um, and it came out of several conversations with people. And I was like, well, why can't I do this? Well, look at that. I can. Um, so it's an expansion on the the protocols that lots of people in dowsing use for clearing work. Mm-hmm. So, fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's a, a lot of fun. And, uh, and it gets, I hope it gets people thinking in a more expanded way about both how much information they can get and how they can grab it. So that, oh. Uh, oh. yeah, it's, um, I've, I've taught it a few times and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, this is interesting because it's, it's all about how we communicate these things, isn't it? Right. Uh, so my talk's going to be, uh, I'm actually been thinking a lot about this. Uh, and when we are trying to uh, communicate our intention if we're trying to change the energies, uh, right. how do we actually do that in an efficient manner? Because we can formulate the words very precisely and state our intention very precisely, but the subconscious doesn't work in that logical manner. You know, right. We need to try and get a, a more artistic approach. Uh, so I'm going to be teaching a graphical approach to encoding your intention. That sounds wow. very similar. Which sounds very yeah. similar. It very sounds similar. kind of similar, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, interesting crossovers in all these areas. Right. Right. Now, how would okay, that compare what, what you gentlemen are, are talking about uh, like with biogeometry, for example? Would, would that be a similar sort of process? Uh, well, I'm, no, I'm um, not, yeah, I'm not on, familiar David. with bio. bio <laughs> I'm not familiar with that particular term. Okay. So uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not that familiar with biogeometry. Um what I find with a lot of these is where people are uh, using their own symbols to do mm-hmm. uh, some something. The symbols are familiar to them, uh, but they may not have resonance with the client. Right. Um, so, you know, they're not universal um, unless you know that particular system. So would, so it, even work? Though, would it work well, for the client then? If well, they didn't, good, if, if yeah, they didn't well, that's resonate? a good question. That's a huh. good question. Is it more efficient to do something that the client can understand and be involved in? Perhaps. Right. So maybe ha- the, have the client generate these symbols. Yeah, to help to have some sort of input into the symbol. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. you know, to try and empower them as part of the process. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think uh, rather than using a stock symbol, say you know this symbol does this and that symbol does the other, uh, you're kind of getting into sort of radionics in a way in biogeometry. I think you can encode your intention much more precisely by creating a custom symbol either yourself or with the client mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that distills that particular intention that you're trying to get across. That's a well, fascinating it's, idea. It's yeah. The idea and of, also, uh, we're all such talkers, <laughs> 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 but it's the idea of giving something physical form. So it take it out of the, out of, out of just idea into physicality and then do something with that physical form. Yeah. Right. And also uh, I think it's important to, uh, do it in such a way that your subconscious can get on with it and you don't have to think about it anymore. So you really need to trick yourself into forgetting about it. Forgetting about what aspect? Yeah, forgetting about the well, the whole thing. You encode the intention and you then forget uh-huh. about it and your subconscious okay. gets on with it. Now, I got, I got onto this because uh, a couple of years ago, I uh, was lucky enough to beat Dr. Emoto from Japan about a year wow. before he died. And at his talk, uh, he was assisted by... Uh, a guy called Rasmus Gelp Berghausen, who runs his Hado Life Laboratory in Europe. And uh, I got Rasmus to come down to the British Society of Dowsers Convention and give a talk. And uh, he was saying, uh, as a scientist, he was very skeptical of uh, Emoto's work with the water crystals. And he'd been trying for months to get these water crystals to form. And he was, you know, beaming his intention at them and piling love on them, all the rest of it. And they just weren't doing it. 
And so he was on the verge of uh, calling Dr. Emoto and saying, I'm sorry, I can't get this to work. Uh, and when he stopped thinking about it, suddenly the crystal started appearing. <laughs> so, so it's he, when he stopped intending and just started paying attention. Well, it sounds like Yoda. Yeah. There is no try, only do. Yeah, right. yeah. So, yeah. you know, actively putting your intention was actually working against it. It's when he stopped thinking about it, they started working for him. But you would have to set it up. Like, you, you, you do have yeah, to yeah. focus at the beginning. Yeah, so it's it's actually easier just to uh, set up something and let them get on with it. So taping the word on the on the jar of water or just playing mm -hmm. a bit of music actually works better than consciously focusing your intention on them. Right, mm -hmm. trying trying to change it. Yeah, um, so yeah. that's that's the idea. It's it's getting the mind to shut up and just let your subconscious right. get on with it. I remember meeting right. Harold McCoy years ago, who uh, the late Harold McCoy, who founded the Ozark Research Institute, and he did amazing healing work with people. And he said that once he had done the work, he never thought about them again. Yeah, because yeah. To, to think about it then would to perpetuate the problem, I wonder how they're doing, kind of brings right. it back. He's, he would just do the work and then uh, and move on to the next one. Right. Yeah. I, I used, I I used to give I used to give clients a detail report because I get numbers when I do the paper dowsing mm -hmm. and people liked it and made it feel concrete. But what I realized was that they would latch on to whatever was the worst sounding, yes. most emotional aspect, yes. yeah. energize, energize it and bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. So at this point I don't, I don't give any reports and, you know, basically I found stuff and I got rid of it. It'll be better now. You know, it's and like no details. <laughs> and are they still they're still willing to pay you for doing that? <laughs> <laughs> they get, Cl clients are, do like to have something, you know. I mean that, and that that's that's a thing. How do how do you demonstrate, except through I guess results in healing? Uh, how do you demonstrate that what you've done has worked? You know, most people get a either have a feeling, even though they don't know when I'm working. Mm -hmm. So when I send them the email, they say, oh, yeah, you know, this was going on. Okay. Um, or they're getting results. They see changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, often you'll get feedback so, like that. The, yeah. Uh, I had a ghostbusting you know, one recently where um, uh, the lady phoned me up the next day and said, uh, what was that lovely body lotion you were wearing? Too much information, Graham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I wasn't wearing any. You know. <laughs> yeah, one, once, once or twice I had people say that they saw me. Um, oh, interesting. Which is, not, which is not the way I work. I'm not projecting myself into the space. But, um, but they picked up on it. Um, which is a nice confirmation. Yeah. Okay. He did something. Mm -hmm. Um, but typically it's, they're dealing with a problem and the problem either quickly or over a period of days or weeks shifts in such a way that they know the intervention made a difference. So it's sometimes results, it's results based. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's dramatic. Those are the mm -hmm. ones that obviously are the, the most fun and the mo most gratifying. Mm -hmm. but Graham and I went for a walk in the woods around here uh, the other day. In fact, surprise, Graham has been staying with me for a little bit, not just, didn't just walk in the door just now, but there, was <laughs> there were mosquitoes in the field and we were discussing how to, we didn't have any bug, bug spray, we were discussing how to keep the bugs off. And I was walking behind him, and um, and I, I smelled lilacs as I walked behind him, even though we don't have there were no lilacs in the area. Mm -hmm. And then Graham, Graham told me that he had been Graham. I had been visualizing a sparkling purple uh, auric field around me with uh, dragonflies flitting around in it. So and I had smelled it as lilacs on the color. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. yeah it was so. It's yeah, fun. it's 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 always fascinating. Um, when you get that kind of a confirmation, one of my favorites is somebody taught me to put up a field around my car so that I'm not noticeable to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. They just don't see the car. And the story that she told was she got in a fender bender one day and called 911 and the patrol car went by her twice Couldn't and see didn't her. see yeah. her. Yeah. And <laughs> she went, Oh, wait a minute. I got to take this down. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then he was like, were you, I just, what, what, what? So I, I reworded my version of that 
so that I am not visible for law enforcement, but visible in case of emergency. <laughs> that, that's good. Which, which, which again is, you know, how do how do you word it in such a way that you're actually getting what yeah. you want, uh, um, not some very large thing that isn't gonna that's gonna create a problem. It really demonstrates the power of what we do when when the wording is so precise that we get the result. The words manifest. The thing we ask for manifests. Right. And then you get it and you go, oh, I didn't really want that. I wanted, you know, I get a lot of relationship questions. People say, well, you know, I want to meet a man or a woman. Um, mm-hmm. and, and they leave it at that. And I say, well, you know, we were romantic. Could, could you be more specific? <laughs> well, yeah. It's like, you know, should they, should they be geographically in your neighborhood? Should they be, uh, um, not married, you know, should they speak the same language? Should they be healthy? All these things. So if you can, if, you know, uh, with, this is true with dosing. If you can get the question right, then you can manifest the result. Right. It's getting, getting the question and the intention detailed enough. I had a, two interesting ones finding this apartment. I had my list mm-hmm. and among on the list was a clawfoot tub to soak in and uh, a screen porch that I could work on. What I didn't say about the screen porch was that it should be quiet because uh-huh. I'm, I'm living on a main road. Yeah. <laughs> and so there, there's noise all the time. Um, and with the clawfoot tub that it would be easy to get in and out of and there'd be enough hot water. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe, so, you know, maybe, what I want, can, what uh, I wanted was the experience and what I talked about was what it would look like. Right. And that doesn't work. That There's, is no. yep. such a good point. I ask that uh, things manifest so the client experiences these things, not just that they mm-hmm. have it, not that they have good health, they experience good health. Right. And that brings it into the right. body, mind, spirit. Right, but the, at the convention, there's always the uh, test thing that they do. Um, you know, all those things they do off on the side to see if people get the question right and that kind of thing. And it's fascinating because it's always about tweaking the question. Yeah, get get the question right, and you'll get the outcome. Right. Know what you want. I mean, and that that takes a lot of the time. Once you know what you want, then it's much easier to get. Right. And isn't that what life is about? Most people have no idea what they want. Well, you so, drift along. You, know? you drift along. Other people tell you what you're supposed to want. And, yeah. And uh, tell you to buy this and buy that and you'll be happy. And, you know, your partner should look like this and have this, that, or the other thing. And you never really get to, this is how I want to feel. This is. Yeah. This is how I want how to feel. I, this is how I want this to work. Um. That's about the only. That's about the only thing there is in life. This is how I want to feel. Right. It, that, that's the only detail. You know, want to feel happy. <laughs> right. That's why we're here, right? <laughs> oh, are we here to make everybody happy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're here to point out that we have choices. That it's possible to make choices in your life that can create happiness. And that there are techniques. That yeah. can be easily learned yeah. that allow you to do that more easily. Yeah. You don't have to be a seventh generation psychic, you know, born in the new moon or something. You can, either there are books, there's YouTube videos, there's your program, there's lots of places to go. Right. Technology, dosing is very easy, the birthright technology, and it just opens up a whole world of possibility for, for health and for abundance and for relationships and children and all kinds of things. It's a great thing. Yeah, one of the one of the things that people can do if you're curious about dowsing is Google um, "letter to Robin," mm-hmm. and there are several places that you can download it. And it was a master dowser teaching a teenager how to douse in a letter. Mm-hmm. So it's, well, it's, it's actually a book by now, <laughs> right? It's, it's all yeah. there. Are, there are a lot of places. Um, yeah, it's actually a website. As, it's letter to Robin dot org. Oh, yeah. terrific. I yeah. wasn't aware of that. But, um, you know, it's very, very simple. It's very straightforward. It teaches how to do the the technique of pendulum dowsing. Yeah. And it's a wonderful starting point that doesn't require 
you know, going somewhere. It's, it's <laughs> free. Somewhat and all the rest of it. And it's free. And, you know, uh, uh, Graham and I each, uh, we're internationaldowsers.org together, but we each have our own YouTube channel. And we each have 20 or 30 uh, YouTube videos all broken out in the same way. So instead of reading a book, you can actually watch us dowsing and listen to us and learn about all kinds of things from pendulum dowsing to uh, geopsychic stress, um, all kinds of things. And uh, Graham, what, what's your uh, website? We better get that in there before we finish the show. Uh, oh, yeah, you can find me at uh, westerngeomancy.org. Uh, I better spell that. So it's western, and then G-E-O-M-A-N-C-Y.org. And Graham and I actually have a uh, partnership, and we are internationaldosers.org, and uh, we do international teaching together and separately and together, but um, the world, at least... I used to say, we used to say that our uh, our world was the English-speaking world, but we have both recently been in Japan, um, uh, working through translators. Uh, Graham was in Portugal. Uh, we've both been in Italy working with translators. Terrific. So the, the the world is a small place, and uh, and we are part of it. Yep. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Yep. Um, Graham, can you give us a really quick definition of geomancy? Because that's probably a term most people have not run across. Yeah, the one-line definition, uh, it's like Western feng shui. There <laughs> What's you go. feng shui? I like it. Okay, I well, like what's it. feng shui? Not everybody knows that. <laughs> it's the art of placing structures on the earth so that they are in the most harmonious combination possible with the surrounding earth energies. Perfect. That Excellent. Good. Okay, that do yep. <laughs> yeah. And speaking and, of earth energies, uh, uh, do, do I have time to mention my new gadget? Sure, we've got about another minute. Okay, okay. Um, so a lot of European dowsers will be familiar with a, a colored disc called the Major Rosette, uh, which a lot of European dowsers use. Traditionally, it's used to uh, categorize water. Uh, so you have different colors, and uh, the different color, whatever your pendulum resonates to, dictates what the quality of the water is. So, you know, it might have uh, sulfur or iron or whatever it is. And we hear dowsers talking about a black stream. Uh, that means it's mm -hmm. a really limited stream, so, so it's black on the major rosette. So I've developed this with another six colors, um, which gives you a bit more options, particularly for earth energy dowsing. You know, there's never enough means of categorizing these energies we're finding. We just talk about, you know, energies, ley lines, right. all the rest of it. So to have something, you can actually say, uh, okay, that was a purple line, you know, so I know that's holy line. Like it Very itself. cool. Yeah. And that's all, that's all on your website. That's all on my website. I'll be selling them at the convention. So it's uh, the Gardener Rosette, it's called. Fantastic. A, a soon to be classic. <laughs> a soon to be classic, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've got about another 30 seconds or so. My guests tonight are Susan Collins from Canada mm -hmm. and Graham Gardner from Scotland. And uh, thank you so much for being being here guys it's so much fun i i only get to see you at convention we don't really get to hang out and have a conversation like this so this was great fun for me it's been fun um, for me too thank you yeah i'm looking forward to seeing you at the convention excellent excellent thank you so much and for the listening audience as they say if you're wondering who is this guy david and what in the world does he do you can go to househealing.com and and there are all kinds of ways to get in touch with me, including a link to set up a 20-minute free co phone conversation. We can do an assessment of a person, place, situation, business, whatever it happens to be, and see how my work might be helpful to you. If you want more about the show, it's cleverly hiding in plain view at, at thefarkusfiles.com. And the archive is there, all the shows going back now six years, hundreds and hundreds of wonderful conversations. Uh, but an even easier way to listen is the smartphone app that comes in both flavors for Empower Radio. And Empower Radio has programming 24-7, wonderful people with a wide range of backgrounds that uh, are doing all kinds of positive things. So listen to my show because it's fun but there's also a whole lot of other things that you can listen to mm -hmm. the app makes it really easy you we're also on almost every streaming media outlet you know 
tune in, uh, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, um, iTunes podcast. We're all over the place. So you can just search for Empower Radio or search for the Farkas Files and find us in whatever way is most convenient for you to listen. And that's improved so much over the, the past year or so. It's incredible. It's so much easier for people to find the show and listen to it. And thank you for being there and listening to the show wherever you are, whenever you are. Um, that's Your listening is why we do this. So uh, thanks for being there. And so until next week, this is David Franklin Farkas. For the Farkas Files, the truth is in here somewhere on Empower Radio. Have a fantastic week.